Hi there folks, it's Jonathan Denwood from WP Tonic and in this video I'm going to be talking about simple tactics to get more membership for your membership website. If that sounds interesting, stay with me, I'll be back in a few moments. We're coming back. I'm going to be talking about simple methods to get more membership for your membership website in 2021. And it's quite amazing. We're almost uh, we're in our third month, aren't we? Um, so that is the crux of the matter. You know, if you're going to have a successful membership website, you've got to have membership. And how do you attract people to your membership website. Obviously, um, the idea that you will build and they will come is a bit of a delusion, um, unless you are a uh, have a mega presence in your particular industry or niche, that literally people search um, for your name in quite large numbers every month you've got to do more than just build it and expect people to come to your membership website. Obviously, if there's an enormous demand for a particular niche, you know, example would be the, what has happened in the pandemic. You know, there's been an enormous demand for knowledge about how to utilize Zoom, how to utilize online tools through communication methodologies. If you're building a course around that, about how organizations can utilize online technology, not only tools like Zoom, but the whole platter of communication applications from Slack to content management systems, the whole platitude. Um, that's probably a hot subject and people are doing a lot of searches for that. But I'm talking about the more normal situation. The great news is there's a number of mythologies that you can use that don't entail you spending an enormous amount of money. But it will mean that you will have to exchange money for sweat equity um i it's gonna take you effort to do these mythologies that i'm just about to explain to you but like i say it's the things i'm going to be discussing with you ain't going to cost you an enormous amount of money and i would suggest that you need to do these things before you look at getting paid advertising or getting paid traffic to your website i would say definitely you really need to look at these morphologies and utilize them before you go down the road of paid traffic so let's start off with social media you know um it's just a platter of platforms from facebook um to linkedin to twitter now, um, when it comes to Facebook, um, basically the problem with Facebook is just setting up a Facebook business page. Um, you're not going to get an enormous amount of traffic. Unfortunately, Facebook um, have been quite mean about how they have literally crippled um, the usability of a business page. You have to have one to do paid advertising. And I, was, I would definitely suggest that you should um, still have a business page, but the, its ability to communicate um, to a, a substantial audience has been crippled by Facebook. But it's good news. The good news is Facebook groups. Now, Facebook groups is what LinkedIn groups used to be a few years ago, and it really is where the action is, one of the places where the action is. And I suggest that you should join all the leading um, Facebook groups that are talking about your particular niche or subject. 
And I suggest that you become an active member. Well, you've got to do that because it's one of the ways that you're going to build up your credibility in the community that you're going to attempt to market to. I also think um, at some stage, you before you publish your first course, you should consider starting your own Facebook group. Um, and it doesn't have to be enormous. Um, it's about the quality of interactivity between you and the members of the group. And are you seen as a, as a leading um, element in the subject? These are the important thing. Now, I said that with LinkedIn, LinkedIn groups have diminished and they have. But LinkedIn, especially if you're in the business, the business um, sector, LinkedIn is still important. LinkedIn advertisement is very much more expensive than either um, Facebook or Google. But like I say, if you're especially in the business, the business, it's something you don't want to um, dismiss. But how can you get in front of your audience? Well, the thing is, they it's similar to Facebook. Um, like I say, Facebook groups is a great way. And I said that they've diminished um, how you can contact people through Facebook pages. But one thing that does work to some extent is live video on Facebook broadcast through your Facebook page. That is one way to increase the amount of people that actually see your content because Facebook is really trying, is in literally a war with Google, YouTube, and they really want to encourage people to broadcast live video on the Facebook platform rather than YouTube. And the same thing can be said with LinkedIn. Um, LinkedIn live video is still, um, you have to get an invite to do it, but they're opening it up to more and more people. It's, you, it's a free application you make through LinkedIn. I'll have the links in the supporting post that accompanies this video. And it's a quick application. Um, it does take a little while for them to come back with a yes or no. Um, it's mostly a yes, though. And then you can broadcast live video on LinkedIn. Um, I think it's at the most 20 minutes. That should be more than enough. And when you do that, I would really hit it hard, especially taking it maybe to an initial free course or uh, something that has value to your target audience. The other great thing uh, is Twitter. Twitter is a great way of building community and driving them um, to either your website or to your YouTube channel. And the other great thing is YouTube. You know, um, I think if you've got any aspirations to build a effective course, a paid course, um, putting a substantial amount of free content on your YouTube channel is a great way of promoting your ability, your knowledge, and um, why people should sign up for a paid course. A lot of people say to me though, but Jonathan, if I put too much value on YouTube, um, people just won't be prepared to pay for a course um, on my membership website. I totally disagree on that. Obviously, if you put everything on um, YouTube, um, that would be a problem, but things move on. Um, um, you can put a YouTube extensive one um, and then you say the regular updates would be available on the membership site. You um, can put a certain degree of knowledge on your YouTube channel, but the more um, detailed knowledge would only be available on your... There's, there's a load 
of courses and information on YouTube just about this particular topic. So when I hear that, I, I just think it's a mindset. It's the wrong mindset that you do have to understand what you're going to get involved with and the balance between um, what you have available on YouTube and what you save for your membership website. But it's very similar um, to the WordPress world where you have free plugins and you have premier plugins. Uh, a lot of plugin uh, developers, the mythology that has really worked for them to promote their paid plugin is to offer a free plugin that has a certain amount of the functionality, but then the, um, and it's a balance and it's a fine balance because you can't cripple your free plugin too much. So it doesn't have any real value. But on the other hand, it has, if it has almost all the value, nobody really is going to upgrade to a premier plugin. And it's just the same with membership websites. So you got that. The other thing is um, don't be the invisible course owner. And what I mean by that is get yourself out there. And one of the most effective ways, especially if your subject is, if you've really chosen a niche, um, is to get yourself on other people's podcasts. Now, podcasting um, is just growing and growing. A lot of people in the past year, I've been doing podcasting myself for over five years now. Um, I know it's shock. I just don't look that old, do I? <laughs> Sorry. Um, but um, it's getting more and more popular, more and more power in. Um, doing a regular um, weekly podcast, um, technically, um, the boundaries aren't that high, but it's just the slog of doing it every week, especially when you've got um, it's a guest based podcast, um, getting people, um, new guests onto your show and building up a system and a mythology and keep doing it. You can soon quickly get burnt out. Um, being a guest on a podcast is a totally different cup of tea. Um, you don't have the editing, you don't have the worry every week of trying to get a, a guest on, the quality of the guest. You just turn up and you just talk about your product, about you and your knowledge. It's a great way and a great free way of promoting your membership website. And you should really look at it in 2021. There are agencies that will help you promote yourself to various podca podcasters but fundamentally um if uh, and they charge from realistically from five to slightly under a thousand dollars a month if you haven't got that type of money you don't need to employ an agency you just need to get a list of the hundred podcasters that you would like to get on and you just um, write to them with an attached nice PDF with uh, some images of yourself, um, having links to videos that you've already done, even if it's a video when you're, you're talking to the camera, like what I am doing now, will really help you get them to sign you up because they would like to have to be able to see how you actually um, come across on camera or through sound but I can't really encourage you more than to do that basically also um, having a book always helps um, it's just a, a way of building your credibility in a particular niche area and the cost of self-publishing, and there's nothing wrong with self-publishing and having and utilizing it in your market, probably in your marketing, it is it's totally okay, adds additional value. You can send it out just covering your postage. 
there's uh, multiple ways of utilising a self-publishing book. The great thing through Amazon and through a, a, a few online services that have sprung up around Amazon self-publishing, um, the uh, ability and the costs of print of developing and having your first book printed have reduced enormously. And it's something that I would highly recommend that you look at. I've kind of mentioned YouTube, but I can't overstress the importance of YouTube um, because it's the second largest um, search engine in the world now. Only um, go normal Google search is bigger. Um, but it's much easier to produce a video, especially in a niche market or a series of videos and have them um, be found through YouTube search at a much higher speed than if you were attempting this with normal traditional Google. It's just that, you know, it's just harder, you know, basically it's just a bit harder buying a camera and getting yourself in front, getting a mic, you know, the real the real um, barriers have reduced enormously, but these are still steps. So it still cuts out a lot of the competition that you would be facing. The other thing is that you don't underestimate traditional Google search and you should be, be building a, at least a year before you publish your first course, a series of articles Combining them with video on YouTube, you know, if you want to promote a written article and build your own website domain authority, and I'll be touching that in a second, what that actually means. If you want to accelerate that process, combining video with well-written articles about subject in your niche area that you plan to make a course on, is a great investment and an investment that won't cost you money. It's just time and effort. Now, um, what a lot of people do is they make educated guesses um, about what people are searching for in their particular niche. And this is a big mistake. There's a number of videos out there. I will have links, like I say, in the post that will be supporting this video that um, tell you how to do SEO research. And it doesn't have to be uh, as um, time consuming or as, as difficult as it sounds. There's a number of quite expensive tools, but also there's a number of inexpensive SEO tools or affordable tools that you can utilize that will make the process easier. And by just spending a bit of time, what you're looking for is terms that people are doing searches on that are not so competitive that a website with your domain authority could not compete with. Now, I've mentioned domain authority twice, so I better get on and tell you why I've mentioned it and why it's important. A lot of people, when they first do some SEO research, um, they look at the top searches and they say, yeah, we're going to go for those. And there is absolutely no possibility that they are going to get on page one. Now, the brutal truth of it, um, obviously, search, it, search engine optimization has got a little bit more difficult because Google are showing even more paid results and then they're showing um, some other results that kind of crowd out the natural results. But the truth is still, if you've got somebody that's really looking for a answer they are going to look at the natural results and if you're not in the top um the top five um 
you you're not going to get a lot of traffic from that particular search search traffic you're just not it's just a fact almost 90 percent of search goes to the first three um but depending on the particular niche term that people are searching for i would i would just say you need to get on to page one now um domain authority google looks at your past activity it looks at your website is your website do people when they come to the website do they stay on the website is is what the website offering coherent does does it come across to your to its target audience as a with a coherent message i they know as soon as they hit the website that they're on the right kind of website for what they're looking for. And then does the website offer increasing value? To, and the way Google judges that is, do the people stay on the website? And then do they go gradually deeper and deeper into the website, looking at various bits of the website? Is there a lot of articles? Are the articles published on a, on a consistent basis? um like like is it article wrote every day every week every month but what i mean is what google doesn't want to see is that you write like three articles and then there's a six month break consist they're really looking for consistency and as you build that consistency and that knowledge that's um encapsulated in your website which would hopefully be seen that people will stay, they don't bounce off. Um, that's another thing that Google is looking at, the bounce rate. That is when people are doing searches and they um, go on your website, they just not satisfied, it's the wrong type of content, they just bounce off. So there's a number of factors, speed of loading, is the website mobile friendly? Um, all these key factors that are Google, Google actually have published this publicly. They haven't ever told people how, or how they rate all these different aspects together, but they've made all the um, really relevant bits totally public. It's not secret out there. And there's a number of articles, and I'll put some of the better ones in the post that will be supporting this video. Uh, I could go on some more, but I think this is getting a bit long, this video now. Um, if you found this video um, value, and I'll be amazed if you haven't, please give us a thumbs up and please subscribe to the channel. Um, we have great interviews um, around WordPress and building a membership website. We have leading marketing experts we interview. And we have a, just a ton of content on the channel, which I'm sure you're going to find really useful as a membership entrepreneur. I'll see you soon, folks. Bye.